Hi everyone, hope you're all doing okay. Uh, this is Monday's lesson on fractions. Before we go into our learning, can you have a quick go at the starter on the video for me? So there's a fraction wall there to help you. I want you to find some equivalent fractions for these down here. So we have three six, six eighths and four tenths. Can you find any equivalent fractions using the fraction wall to help you? If you want to pause the video now for a couple of minutes and see how many um, equivalent fractions you can think of. Okay, hopefully you managed to have a go at that. So three sips. Um, let me get my pen. So that's one, two, three, six. So I can see that that's equivalent to one half. It's equivalent to two quarters. Four eighths, five tenths and six twelfths. Okay, so well done if you've got any of those. Six eighths, um, so that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So anything equivalent to this shape. So I can see one, two, three quarters, and I can also see nine twelfths. Okay, so that would also be equivalent. And then finally we've got four tenths. So one, two, three, four. So anything equivalent to this. And I can see two fifths, okay? So well done if you got any of those. Um, if you didn't use a fraction while you thought of others, then well done. So we're going to carry on looking at equivalent fractions today. We have the same star words as last week. So we have denominator, remember that's the bottom number, it's the D for down. The numerator um, is the top number, and we also have equivalent, so that just means that they're the same or have, they have the same value. So let's look at this question and just to recap, pick numbers that are equal. So what I want you to do is have a look at these fractions and can you pick any out which are equal? So you might want to pause the video, see how many you can spot which are equal to each other. Okay, so I just had a quick go at that one as well. So I found these equivalent fractions. So we have one half is equivalent to four eighths, two quarters and three six. You could use the fraction more to help you with that. Um, because we can see that one half, you times both of those by two, you get two quarters, you times them both by three, you'd get three six, and if you times them both by four, you'd get four eighths. Um, I then also noticed that these are equivalent, so these ones in red, um, so one quarter, if you times that by two, you'd get two eighths, and if you times one quarter by three, you'd get three twelfths, therefore they are all equivalent. And then I have three left, and um, it did throw me for a bit, because I thought, well, they must have they must be equivalent, but actually they're not because three eighths, one third and four quarters. You can't really divide, well, you can't divide three by a number to make it equivalent to something. So these aren't the same. They're not equivalent. So they're just odd ones out, I guess. Um, but these ones are equivalent and the ones in black up here are also equivalent. So. What I want you to do is have a look at the numbers and I want you to think about which fraction is bigger. And I want you to have a think about how you know that. So what could you do to prove it? And remember that we whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top and vice versa. So how do you know which fraction is bigger? So straight away, I'm looking at this seven and this eight. So I'm thinking, oh, it must be bigger because this is an eight and that's only a four. However, because they're not the same, um, oh, didn't mean to do that. Because they're not the same fraction, we can't compare them. You can only compare fractions when they've got the same denominator. So what you would need to do is make these the same denominator. So we could divide this by two to get four, but we couldn't divide seven by two. Well, unless we'd get a decimal, but we don't want a decimal in a fraction. Um, so we could times four by two. So if we times four by two, like they've done here, you'd get eight. But then remember, you've got to do the same to the top. So three times two would be six. Now we can compare them because they've got the same denominator. OK, so if you ever had to compare fractions, you need to make sure you've got a something called a common denominator. I think I mentioned it in the video last week when the denominators are the same, okay? Because then you can compare them because else it, it's not the same fraction. They need to be the same um, the same denominator for it to be the same fraction. So six eighths is, is actually smaller than this one. However, if this number was um, any lower, then it would have been a smaller fraction, okay? 
hopefully that made sense. We're going to have a look at another one. Um, but I would like you to have a go. So if you're feeling confident, can you have a think about which one's going to be bigger? If you're not too sure, then we'll go through it together now. So what you need to do is make sure the denominators are the same to compare them because you cannot compare them unless the denominators are the same. So what you need to do is times five by two to get 10. So therefore we're going to times this fraction by two. So we have 10 as the denominator. We've done five times two is 10, three times two is six. So therefore this fraction is bigger because it's six tenths rather than four tenths. And we know that six is bigger than four. Okay, I mean, it's quite straightforward. It's just remembering the different steps. Okay, so whatever, you just need to make the denominators the same. And however you would do that, you've got to make sure you do to that. And it's important to remember that you can only times or divide um, the numbers to make them equivalent. Okay, so you can't just add five onto each number because that wouldn't um, make them equivalent you've actually got to times them by the same number okay so that's a key piece of information to remember so now it's your independent learning what i want you to do is go through each group if you're really confident start on group two if you're not so confident start on group one um, and i want you to write down which fraction is bigger so spend about five minutes or so doing this so you might want to pause the video go through them um, and work out which fraction is bigger a little tip as well, um, you might want to use your fraction walls to help you work this out because you'd be able to actually see which one's bigger then by using that as well. So if you want to use a fraction wall, um, you might want to go back to the start or back to last week's video and you can use the fraction wall to help. Okay, hopefully you managed to have a go at those. I've written the answers on for you. So I've circled the one which is bigger um, and I've written next to it what you had to times um, the denominator numerator by to get the common denominator. Okay, so I've just written that there. So the first one, you only have to times it by two, um, and then they got kind of gradually more difficult as they went along. So hopefully you got most of those right. If you want to mark it quickly, and um, I'm moving on too fast, then pause the video now. We're going to move on to some developed learning now. Okay, so we're using our knowledge to work out a word problem. So the question says, Jess offers to give two fifths of her food to Ruby and three tenths of her food to Daisy. Who will get the most food? Now, as I said before, we cannot compare these fractions until they've got the same denominator, OK, because they're not the same fraction now, so we can't compare them like that. So what we need to do is make two fifths have the same denominator as this. OK, so have a think. What do I do to five to get to ten? So how am I going to make this denominator into ten? I've just realised I've written it as I said it without even thinking about it. Sorry about that. Um, so you actually times it by two. It's been a long week, my friends. <laughs> um, so we have two fifths and we're timesing it by two. Five times two is ten and then two times two is four. So we have four temps. Now we can compare them. So Jess offers to give two fifths, which we know now is equivalent to four tenths. OK, those are the same. We've just made it the actual numbers themselves bigger, but the fraction is still the same. OK, because you could, they're, they're equivalent. They mean the same value. Um, so we know that she gives four tenths of her food to Ruby and three tenths of her food to Daisy. So Ruby. Um, is getting the most food because she's got four temps, whereas Daisy only getting three temps. OK, so like I said before, it's not too much of a complicated concept. It's just quite a bit to remember. Um, and so that's why we're practicing it, really. Um, but hopefully that made sense. It is time for you to have a go on mathletics now. So on there, you'll have some tasks to do. Um, I think there's just one assignment, but the assignment itself will use knowledge from the past three sessions because they've all been on equivalent fractions. Um, it will use your knowledge, not necessarily just from today, but from last week as well. OK, so if you do that and then you finish it and want a challenge, then there's a challenge at the end of this video that I'll go through with you. Um, if not, though, then I hope the mathematics is OK. If there's any questions or any problems, then send me a message or send me an email and I will get back to you when I can. OK. So for those who are moving on to the challenge and you want to have a go at this and you might want to pause it now um, and then I'll go through the answers at the end with you.
Okay, welcome back to those of you who are doing the challenge. Hopefully the mathematics activities weren't too bad. So the challenge says Tommy is finding equivalent fractions. So we have three quarters is the same as five sixths and seven eighths and nine tenths. He says, I did the same thing to the numerator and the denominator, so my fractions are equivalent. Do you agree with Tommy? Explain your answer. So looking at the fractions, we need to look at the pattern first. We need to find out what he's done to them. So he says he's done the same to the top as he has to the bottom. So let's find out what he's done then. So to get from four to six, he's added two. To get from six to eight, he's added two. Eight to ten, he's added two. And he's done the same with the numerators. So he has added two each time. And he's done it to the numerator and the denominator. So why, why is that correct? Do you think that's the right thing to do? Does that mean they're equivalent? What do you think? Now, it's really hard not to have a conversation with you. But he is actually incorrect, okay? Because as I said earlier, you can only times fractions or divide them um, to make them equivalent, okay? If you just add them, that doesn't make them equivalent, okay? Because it, it's not the same value. Whereas if you're timesing or dividing both of them, it means that the value is still there, okay? Um, so therefore he is not correct, all right? Hopefully that made sense. Um, and if you want me to go over anything, then let me know. And yeah, that's everything for today. Hope you enjoyed it and hopefully it wasn't too bad. Thank you.